What's up guys, Romsko here, and this is the new Keychron Q1, the latest and greatest 75% gasket mount keyboard. And we are going to be going deep into the review so you know everything about this keyboard before you decide to buy it. It's currently available on pre-order right now and you can check it out in the link in the description. The Q1 comes with a keyboard, a coiled aviator cable, keycap puller, switch puller, hex tool, Phillips screwdriver, extra keycaps, extra gasket foam, hex and PCB screws, as well as extra rubber feet too. And coming at an unbelievable $150 for a bare bones kit or $170 for a fully assembled kit, this keyboard may be the best bang for your buck board on the market, no cap. The closest competition that we have is the GMMK Pro, which costs $170 for a bare bones kit, but we will talk about that in a separate video. When it comes to design, the Keychron Q1 is a beast thanks to the full CNC aluminum construction, weighing in at a hefty 1.6 kilograms when fully assembled. We have a USB-C port on the back as well as a dedicated tactile switch for Mac and Windows because what Keychron does best is make keyboards that are fully compatible with Mac and Windows as shown through the function keys and modifier keys. The Q1 comes in three colors, you've got black, navy, and silver, and if you buy it fully assembled, these are the keycap sets that come with them. So as mentioned before, this is a 75% keyboard, so you have the function keys up top, arrow keys, as well as the function keys on the right. On the top right corner, there is a spot to put a badge in, but it is defaulted as a switch on the retail keyboard. The metal surface is nice and smooth, and here is the side profile with a rectangular top and angled bottom. On the back side, we have this beveled look that looks pretty clean, and it's the same thing on the front side. You can also get a little taste of the flex of this keyboard by pressing down on the corners and the sides to experience the flexibility of a gasket mount keyboard. And when we look at the bottom, we have four rubber feet, and you can see that Keychron opted to use gold hex screws instead of Phillips screws, which is kind of weird. I personally am not a fan of using the hex tool because it just makes more work to open up the keyboard, and I would have definitely preferred some gold Phillips screws instead. So the keycaps shown here are the ones provided on the fully assembled version. They have an OEM profile and are made with double shot ABS plastic, so they're nice and smooth and will shine quickly over time. And if we look at the bottom, you can see that only the top portion is double shot and not the entire keycap. So the default keycap sets aren't going to give you the best thought, but thankfully, Keychron sells their own PPT keycap sets for $40 each. You can get the bluish black and white set or the hacker set, and you can get many others like that on the website right now. I would highly recommend getting some PPT keycaps because they sound better and feel better. And just an FYI, none of the keycaps listed have a shine through feature. So if you want the lights to go through the keycaps, you're going to have to look for keycaps somewhere else. But one thing that's great about Keychron keycaps is that they will always have the widget features printed to make it macOS friendly, as well as having all necessary keycaps for other operating systems too. And now let's take a look underneath the keycaps because we have the Gadron X Keychron exclusive Phantom switches. These are the red switches, but there's also a blue and brown variant available too. Compared to regular Gateron switches, the Gateron Phantoms have the exact same switch specs and there are two differences. It's pre-lubed and the transparent housing has the same color as the stem. So the upside is that the switch is much smoother right out of the box, but the downside is that it's not very RGB friendly because the housing color cancels out some colors. But moving along, this keyboard is also hot swappable. As you can see, this PCB has south facing switches, surface mounted RGB LEDs, and 5 pin support. So definitely GMK keycap compatible and works with all switches whether it has 3 pins or 5 pins. As for the plate, we are using the FR plate, but you can choose to get a polycarbonate or brass plate at an additional cost. As for the stabilizers, if there's one thing I love about this keyboard, it's the stabilizers. They are amazing. Screw in stabilizers, aka the best kind, lube to perfection, and there's no rattle whatsoever, which is a total blessing because that means less time in making the keyboard sound good. And now I'm going to let you guys hear what the keyboard sounds like. We're going to have the ABS keycaps first, then PPT keycaps with the Gateron Phantoms, but I'm just going to let you guys know you guys should prepare for the worst.
So I know what you guys are thinking. Wow, the Q1 sounds so bad. And yes, I absolutely agree. The ping noise is almost as bad as the Razer Huntsman Mini, and that's very shocking to me. But the issue is not the switches, and it's not the foam, but the way they designed the gasket mount feature. So let's look into the keyboard and see what's up. So after taking off the hex screws, the first thing you see is that the bottom case has a layer of dampening foam, but it's only around 1mm in height, so it doesn't really do that much. Now in order to get access to the rest of the keyboard, we have to unscrew the USB-C port and the switch. And after that, the top case runs free. Now you can see how the badge is fixed into the top plate as well as the felt lining underneath the tactile switch to make sure there isn't any metal to metal contact when sliding back and forth. Just an FYI, the badge is just a slab of CNC aluminum with a top printed logo so it's not laser printed or anything and it's going to cost you 30 USD if you want that choice. And if we look at the PCB underneath the badge, you can see that there are hot swap sockets for a switch as well as space to solder in a rotary encoder. So Keygrad hasn't really said much about the rotary encoder other than saying it's going to be available in the future. So we don't really know how the knob is going to work. Is it going to be the same as the GMM Game Pro? No one knows yet. Considering that the PCB already has three sockets on the bottom, two sockets on the top, along with those two gaping holes, you should be able to throw in a third party rotary encoder inside. Now let's talk about the gasket mount design. With the gasket mount keyboard, the plate technically never touches the case while the PCB essentially floats in the air. And these are the gasket foams that help isolate the plate, resulting in a very muted typing experience. But as you can also see, these pieces of foam aren't dense at all and are actually super flimsy and only show up on 4 of the 8 protrusions of the plate. And by the way, I filled all the empty plate slots with the gasket foams provided in the box and it made absolutely no difference so you can save the time on doing that. If I compare actual pour-on foam from the KBD K65, you can almost immediately see the density difference. It's at the point where if I squish the two foams together, the Q1 foam is completely compressed before the K65 foam even begins to move. And right now I'm going to show you guys what the Q1 sounds like without the gasket mount feature when it's just on its own. And it's going to sound the same whether you have the bottom case on or the bottom case off. And I'm just going to tell you guys right now it sounds way better. Okay, so we've talked about all the physical features of this keyboard, so now let's move on to the software features. The Q1 is QMK and VIA compatible, so you have absolute control over everything, over remapping, over secondary functions, over RGB lighting, and all that good stuff. Because this keyboard has two modes already thanks to the physical switch, with QMK Configurator you actually get four default layers to change so you can have two completely different configurations with just the flip of a switch and that is just awesome. One thing I really like about the Q1 is that the reset button is directly under the spacebar and is very accessible, but you'll only have to worry about this if you're going to be flashing your keyboard with QMK or VIA. RGB of course is also a thing and it looks pretty good. You have 13 different effects and you can change everything about them directly on the board without the use of a software. And like I mentioned before, with the phantom switches or any colored switch for that matter, if you want RGB, you'll definitely want to choose a switch with neutral colored housing for the best RGB performance. Alright, so final thoughts. The Keychron Q1 is a nice keyboard, but it could definitely be better. The build quality is there, it's awesome, and the enthusiast features are also there too. But the sound is just not that great. The stabilizers are great though, but the typing experience is just meh. You hear that? Ugh. But at the end of the day, this is still a pretty good keyboard for the price that you're paying for. Fully anodized CNC aluminum build, you've got double shot ABS keycaps, pre-looped Gateron Phantom switches, you're getting a coiled aviator cable, you're getting full support, full compatibility for Windows and Mac OS, you've got RGB lighting, and you've also got QMK and VIA compatibility right out of the box. And we've also got a rotary encoder coming in soon, so look out for that. The gasket mount keyboard is not for everyone anyways. Because of the way the plate is mounted, it results in a very muted sound sensation, so if you're someone who's looking for a very thocky keyboard, you have to stay away from gas mount keyboards because it will do nothing to help you get that thock. 
Thanks for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments down below and I'll be sure to interact with you there. I love helping you guys make a purchase decision and help you learn about new things a lot. And so does the sponsor of our video, Skillshare. This channel solely exists to help you learn more about the products that you want to buy or didn't even know existed. And with Skillshare, you can learn even more. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators and just about anybody. With all these resources, you can explore new skills, rekindle former passions, and absorb all the knowledge in the world. Want to try some body animation? Well, Russ has got you covered on that with Cinema 4D. You want to get fancy with your video edits? Then Jake is your go-to guy with this After Effects course. And if you want to get better at drawing people, then YouTuber Jazza is here to help you out. I'm trying to bring back my passion for drawing and it all starts off with practice and a good teacher. So Jazza's 28 day drawing challenge is going to be great for me. And since Skillshare is curated for learning, there are no ads and dozens of new classes being launched constantly, so the knowledge train never ends and nobody can stop you from learning except yourself. Use the link in the description to get one free month of Skillshare Premium and just let the knowledge flow into your mind. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace.